basic fire control problem, right? Yeah. So, and I'll talk specifically about, yeah, the basic problem, whether it's a land um, or an aircraft target, obviously we never shot at uh, any kind of aircraft targets, it was all land, but the basic problem is that you have to know exactly where you are, you have to know where the target is that you're shooting at, and then you need to know where mm -hmm. your target will be when the round right. impacts, because of course you're... Uh, your ship is moving, mm -hmm. um, so it's the target, uh, if it's another ship is moving, but if it's land, of course it isn't. But, yeah. um, either way, um, interesting thing about it when you're shooting maximum range for a 16 inch, um, it's about time of flight, I think was uh, at our max range we were shooting, I think it was around 65 seconds or something like that. And your, your apogee of the shell, I think in the Gulf War West, when we were shooting at max range at land targets, I think it was um, about 35 or 40,000 feet. So if you ever find the range tables for 16-inch gunnery, you can look that up, um, and it'll tell you what that that maximum range is um, and the apogee. Important because if you've got aircraft in the area, you want to make sure that they're not flying a um, in that at that elevation. Yeah. We would tell our shore spotters or our aerial spotters. You know they could fly above that. The Marines always wanted to fly below that, so it was important to understand that's just the way they were trained, what they would fly at. But uh, you know, uh, it, it would take a long time for the round to get on target, and um, and then of course once it impacted, then you knew exactly where it landed, and you'd make any corrections. So that would be called spotting. Mm -hmm. you, you'd have that there, and then you'd make corrections to this component for you there. So that's the basic fire control problem. You know where the target is, you know where you are, you don't know where you will be in the future your target is. Um, so then we can talk really about how all this equipment ties into that fire control problem. Yeah, love it. So this is the Mark 41 Stable Vertical. Um, this is uh, basically, it's a gyroscope inside there. Um, this, during the World War II compilation, would have three or four operators. Um, and you would have an operator over here uh, managing the target bearing. Um, and then over in here, you would have two other operators using these handrails here to keep these levers. You'll notice these little marks there. But what would happen is as the ship, once, when this is turned on and the ship is rocking, these things would go moving back and forth like that. Just on their own? Just on their own wow. with this operating, right? So if your gyroscope wasn't working you'd have a guy over here having to keep that online the whole time and another person over there keeping that all online there and that would give you what's called um it, that the whole purpose of this equipment right here was to do two things one to shoot the guns but they also the second thing it was really designed for was to keep the guns at a fixed position so as the ship would rock around it so when you look at the uh any kind of guns, uh, whether it's a five inch mount or a 16 inch turret, you would notice that they're, they're appearing that they're actually moving up and down, but they're not, they're actually fixed and the ship is doing the rocking. Wow. So, but that's what this whole purpose was to do that. Um, so we would have that, but, uh, but usually what would happen is this would be operating uh, fine. Uh, inside here, you could actually see the uh, gyroscope itself. Um, I think it's full of some desiccant right now, but that would, when this is turned on, there's a light that illuminates in there. Um, this thing spins, and then this would rotate in uh, in circles. Oh, cool. uh, not not like that way, but just like this. So it's kind of like an old... Like ladder. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. top, and it always points up. Right. Right, okay. Right. But that's how that would work. It, it is full of mercury, that gyroscope. Wow. Uh, part of the uh, responsibilities of the fire controlman would be to maintain this equipment and at times you would have to remove this cover go in there and make sure the mercury was still in there um, and it basically has two reservoirs with little synchros and servos that would actually be moving that mercury from one side to the other it was always it, it was never out of mercury wow so, but we always had to do our plan maintenance every uh, probably quarterly or, or, or annually to check the fluid levels in there. Uh, truthfully, what we ended up doing a lot of the times with it is playing with the mercury in our hands because we didn't know how dangerous it was. Oh my God. So we did a lot of that kind of stuff, you know, it had given us a, 
Yeah, we're just young, bulletproof, and I was gonna say, how old were you at the time? Yeah, nine, probably what nineteen twenty. Yeah, nineteen. Because like we that. just yeah. came from submarine duty. Yeah. To here, because we were both on different submarines, and the special program for sub sub land to ask surf land, give up, if you would, give up or volunteer. Uh, submarine qualified fire control technicians with no NEC, no special job code. We never had a school. Oh. We were just standard sailors that went into fire control and got our pins, our dolphins, submarine qualified. Yeah. FTGs. And so we, about 20 of us, I guess, manned up the oh, Iowa. Because yeah. this is the Jersey, it was still in Beirut. We were supposed to leave Pascagoula and get commissioned and go start shooting, relieving Jersey, yeah. blowing up right. Beirut. We were late, they left, they came home, we went to the Caribbean and played. Yeah. Wow. A lot of Central America drug ops. Yeah. We yeah, yeah, we take Coast Guard Coast on board, Coast. which gives us the authority to be a Coast Guard appointed vessel, and we would do drug interventions. Yeah. On a battleship? Stop a... your boat. Oh my God. <laughs> that's, what, that's what was going on in the 80s, yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. we were Cold War. Yeah, yeah. So getting back to the Mark 41, Obviously, you've got your triggers here. Uh, this would, the way that that would operate is that when you were getting ready to shoot, this would tell you what turret you're shooting at. If they're ready, this would illuminate. I believe it was orange. Um, you had this little button here which said basically plot ready, which could go to the, uh, in the turrets as well. But that basically would say your solution was set and you're getting ready to shoot. So you would get the command to shoot. You'd squeeze the um, salvo warning alarm three times. So yeah. boom. Bump, bump, and then both of these simultaneously. On the third. On the third one. That way the turret knows that you did pull the firing trigger. Boom, boom. So boom. you go, you know, hit ready, set, go. Yes. Yeah. So if you heard, they heard the third salvo and they didn't hear a boom, they got a misfire. Yeah. Oh. And that's when we would then start going through our misfire procedures. And that's why you had a lot of your communication back there that we could talk about in a little while mm -hmm. when we get into maintenance. But everybody here would be on sound power phones you can see here's where they were plugged into the x61j um, circuit it looks like there um, and you would also notice that when you press this you would see there would be your salvo signal forward that would illuminate too um, those are kind of your ready illuminations for um, the turrets as well and then once if we got into that point where we said ceasefire like if we had a misfire you'd pull the ceasefire alarm there is it this one yep Yep, and that would go uh, signal the turret that, hey, they need to stop doing what they're doing and uh, we're not shooting anymore, so stop loading or anything like that. Did you get so, any of those? Oh yeah, well you would always press the ceasefire alarm, but it wasn't mm -hmm. for, it might be your your uh, mission is complete, right? Mm -hmm. You're shooting it, and a lot of times it was when we were doing what's called naval gunfire support, so it would be just, um, you know, the spotter would tell us to get around, he would say, okay, um, uh, target destroyed, target neutralized, so then you go cease fire, ready for us to do anything else. Oh. Um, all of those signals that we have going through here, so nothing in here is digital, this is all analog. As you move these handles, you can actually feel a lot of, go ahead and turn one of those, rotate it. You can feel it takes a lot of yeah, effort to move that, right? So, it, and uh, what you would do is when it was uh, the fire control solution, when this was working right, you press that down like that, and these would jump out into the, in the automatic oh. position. So now, if you move that, it's not engaged. Oh, yeah. All right, so that way you're not doing anything with it. How do you get it back in? Just push? push? It in. Now you're back in manual operations. And, then you go. and remember, your job Just... right there is to keep those lined up. You're not doing that right. <laughs> you're off. You're off target. There, so. so I got to go there. There you go. Okay, there you go. All right. Right there on that line? That's right. That's right. Nice. Smaller ships would have a harder time doing the same style thing. This battleship, it does roll. We roll here in port when we're moored up on oh, the yeah. line. Oh yeah, she's been moving this by, week. We do it. So each one, like, like you're saying, in the old days, when you shot your guns, you shot in the upswing. Because the ship yeah, just sure. moved. Because if you shot down, you're going to hit the water. Yeah. And Rumor Central said, didn't turn that on after, while we were just after commissioning. The turned there on when they were doing their gunfire test, you know, to get certified. And they shot. And it went up over the target range and blew up a bunch of goats. So our XO, uh, Chinesky on the IO, over the over the one MC. Well, we all had to go to Puerto Rico and do mm -hmm. a uh, shoot because we had approved battleships worked. And he called us goat killers. Oh my God! And then we would do our thing. We've been called worse. Yeah. 